Good evening. This is the North Planning Board meeting. The, the evening of September 14, 2020. The hour of 7 o'clock is upon us. And we have an, uh, an agenda tonight that should get us out of here by 8.15, 8.30. Okay, we'll start off with the the minutes from the August 24th meeting we had a chance to review and are there any changes that need to be made okay if I had nothing further I'd like to have someone make a motion to accept make a motion to accept and a second please second I have a Motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And a roll call, Mr. Hinchy, Aye. Mr. Petchakowski. Aye. Mr. Bamber. Aye. Mr. Che Mr. Sheehan. Aye. And the chairman votes aye. aye. Nothing on the acceptance of the minute. Okay. The second here, second item on the agenda this evening. We have a continued minor site plan approval for a sign of, for Norwood Spice at 655 Washington Street, Jao Kiamar. Norwood Spice is the applicant. And how do we stand on that? I so see. I believe. I believe the. Um the sign designer, um, either Christian or, or Oscar, is um, representing this project. Uh, they were able to add a, a revised um, uh, sign. So I believe the, the previous submission was just a, um, it was a, an aluminum sign overhanging the existing uh, awning um, that was at 655 Washington Street, which if anyone knows is the, um, it was Victoria's Cafe. Um, the uh, you know uh, I believe Oscar or Christian went back and um, were able to give us a revised version of the sign and uh, what they provided was just a um, a replacement for the awning um, the this the uh, the um, the fabric material so instead of the mat uh, metal sign um, basically hung up on front of the sign they're just going to go for a complete awning um, replacement in terms of the uh, in terms of the fabric. Uh, with the, the size itself, it was reduced slightly. I'm just going to try to go up to my, my write up. So the sign before it was, it was, it was a little bit over 30 square feet. They were able to adjust the square footage of the lettering to get it under 30 square feet at about 25.25 square feet. Um, that's well within our, uh, our zoning bylaw for, uh, for a primary sign within the downtown um, central business district. Um, and it's in compliance with six, zoning bylaw 6.2.16.2. Um, they also provided, I believe, I, mean, if you can, I think I have it in one of the renderings. One moment. There was, uh, on either side of the awning, there's just gonna be the, um, the restaurant's phone number. So that that sign itself, and if you want to count, if you want to count that as a as a secondary sign, they're allowed to have two of those if it's facing different angles. Um, both of those, I believe, were under two square feet, so well within, within compliance for a secondary sign as well. So uh, with that, with the new revision of this sign, um, I would recommend approval. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Are there anything, any of the members that have any questions at this time? regarding this revised mr sheehan just the revised it's a it's a they're totally uh totally new fabric over the uh awning they they've seemed to have come a long way is that the case yeah that's how uh that's how it was presented to me and i believe um christian uh from the sign company is here as well yes hi um i'm here um what we're going to do is yeah we're going to recover the existing awning so removing the old awning material and putting uh, new awning material, as you guys advised us. Over the frame. Correct. Okay. Looks very that nice. Sounds, that sounds great. Anybody else have any questions? Mr. Patrick Kowski.
Uh, just uh, thank the uh, the uh, owner occupant for stepping up. It's a huge improvement of what we saw last time. Uh, replacing the awning uh, again. New new business in town. You know, first impressions. You know, is what the people see the sign and and uh, just thank you for the uh, the upgrade. It, it, it's a it's a nice improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hatchy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to echo uh, Ernie's comments that um, it's a it's it's a, it's very nice to see that the um, applicant came through um, with a much more attractive product. I think uh, uh, it, it'll be a nice addition to downtown. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, not hearing any additional. May I get a motion, please, and a second. Accept it. Move okay. to accept. And a second. Second. And a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. Roll call on that. Mr. Hatchie. Aye. Mr. Pachikowski. Aye. Mr. Bamber. Aye. Mr. Sheehan. Aye. And the chairman votes you aye. Five zero on that, Patrick. Thank you. So, Christian, if you're still here, um, what I'm going to do is write an approval letter. Uh, have Paul sign that. Um, copy of you, copy of that will be sent to you, as well as the um, building inspector. Um, and you'll be you'll need that copy of the the approval letter when you go for uh, building permitting. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. Next item on the agenda is a mine of site plan approval for the sign for Happy Kitchen. Washington Street, Dorchester Awning Company. Here. So, Tom, do you represent Dorchester Awning? Yes. You want to want to run through the uh, your proposal? Yes. What we are proposing is to recover the existing awning in the same color material and change the graphics from the previous uh, bamboo cafe to the new tenant of uh, the Happy Kitchen. It'll have Happy Kitchen following the radius of the two marquee faces with some Chinese characters vertically in the center and the telephone number at the bottom. Chinese characters uh, say what? Uh, you know, I don't know, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing my daughter said to me when I saw the little Chinese symbol on her ankle for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, anybody have any on the... Mr. Petrikowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, two two questions. One, uh, we're, we're putting when you say you're covering the existing awning, um, are you taking the old awning down? We're getting a brand new awning. That's question one. And question two, uh, you may not be able to answer this, but are the but Patrick, are there window signs uh, involved in this? Uh, and is that something that we need to be concerned about at this point, or is that come under a different? Uh, the vial off of the square footage of the window signs, if there are any. So there was I nothing don't... submitted on our end for window signs. I believe there's stuff in the windows currently. Um, that would have to follow, if they were temporary signs, I'd have to follow our, our, our bylaws regarding, um, I believe, you no more than 30% of the square footage of the window panel. If it's a temporary sign, such as um you know an open sign or something like that but um nothing was proposed with this application for, for window signage okay thank yeah, you we're not, we're not part of uh, any uh, window signage if they intend to have any i'm not sure uh, but yes we will be removing the existing frame recovering it with the new material and new graphic beautiful thank you that's it mr chairman thank you thank you Wendy. uh anyone else have any questions Okay, if I don't have any other questions, can I have a motion, Mr. Sheehan? No, I think Paul was raising his hand. 
for a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, not a question, but a, but a comment. Um, we only allow 30% of a window to be covered with window signs. That will be in the, uh, in the letter that will go with this. But I wanted to make sure that um, Tony, uh, uh, Tom conveyed that message to his client. I will get that to the lieutenant, yes. Thank you. Appreciate that, Paul. Okay, any, any further questions? Mr. Sheehan. Oh, just a, a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. say aye. 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 Go call. Mr. Hatchy. Uh, uh, aye. Okay, Mr. Petrakowski. Aye. Mr. Bamber. Aye. Mr. Sheehan. Aye. And the chairman says aye. Five zero, Patrick, on the vote. Yep. Okay. Moving right along. The next item is. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm Thank sorry. you, Tom. So, Tom, same thing as before. I'll uh, I'll have a um an approval letter written up, signed by by Paul, the director. Um, and I'll. I'll probably mail as well as email you uh, a copy of that okay. announcement needed before getting building permitting. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Have a great evening. You too. Thanks. Okay. Anything else before I move on? Okay. Seven oh seven oh five continuation of public hearing or site plan review, the redeveloping. Redevelopment of existing Big Y Supermarket, 420 to 442 Walpole Street. Philip Mackey, attorney for the proponent, and Cedar Realty Trust is the owner. Gentlemen, questions at this time? I received a phone call today from one of the abutters. They seem satisfied with the outreach from Cedar Realty. And this is regarding crossing of the, the um, right of way in the rear of the buildings. Um, I got a notice from the town engineer regarding the rear uh, receiving areas, and he is satisfied with that. And um, the other items was about the water coming off the back of the building, and that has been addressed and incorporated into the uh, water movement for the um, the uh, stormwater management on the property. So I think we've opened, we've we accounted for all the open items that we had. Uh, are there any other members of the board that have anything else they would like to um add to this before I open it up. Seeing none, uh, what I want to do then is uh, anybody in the public last uh, opportunity for any uh, last minute comments. I, I, I don't want anybody just to regurgitate what we've been through time and time again. And this is going to be an, an issue regarding the site plan and uh, let's go from there. Anybody out there that has any questions or comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, Edward Valenzuela, I represent Route 1 Liquors. Okay, Edward, good evening. Good evening. Um, so three quick points. As you know, in the last hearing, I brought up the issue regarding the dumpster location and access to it and deliveries in the rear of the building. Around quarter of five today, I did receive an email showing uh, a few plans and how that would uh, take place. I haven't had a chance yet to review that with my client or have anyone else look at that to see if the turning radiuses and the uh, you know, locations are going to work. And I'm wondering, did the town engineer make those plans and are you comfortable that uh, 18 wheel trucks can make a turn as they come in the back there and back up to the rear of my client's property. Based on the 
the drawings that were sent. Yeah. Okay. They appear to have a being loaded. I'm sorry, I'm having a trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. The dog. I don't have a dog. <laughs> Okay, he seems to be okay now. <laughs> okay. I see here we've got two drawings from Cedar Realty. Okay, for the propo proposed loading of this for a typical 40 cubic yard sanitation truck, showing that it can make it in and, and out. The, the dumpster is located at the property line, so it's within the boundary of the of the property. In, the, in consideration and shows the turning radius that it can get out of the property as well. The second one is the uh, truck route study of the rear of 53 foot trailers. That's noted as WB67. And it shows how they can come in, back up and back out again, uh, drive back out again. Um, I had no comment. Other, I'm looking for the town engineer I thought he had given approval to this. I don't have that right here in front of me this evening, but I did not get any objection, if you will, that to that. I would uh, suggest that we need the town engineer to weigh in on this. I mean, with all due respect to Cedar, they, they certainly can show um, turning radiuses and how it's going to work in their view, but uh the town engineer and we're going to have someone look at it as well may have a a, a different thought about that so I, I think it's important for the town engineer to weigh in okay if i can't find that tonight we will ask him to uh, weigh in on it as well but that's not going to stop the process of the meeting this evening and i have one other comment if i may mr chairman go right ahead sir so on uh, the phase plans on the phase three plan I noticed it indicates um, the phase three will start September 1, 2021 until June 2022. And then it goes on to say Big Y commences construction in that period and the liquor store build out will be complete and ready to open for business on or about October 1, 2021. I understand from my client and my client's discussions with the landlord rep representatives that we're not going to reopen until big Y reopens the way they have this phase indicated is that sometime around September, October, 2021, my client has to reopen if this space is ready while construction is going on in the big Y space. And that's not, uh, that's not what our understanding was. So I don't know if this is an older plan phase three plan, and that's been revised or going to be revised, but I, I think it's important that this plan be accurate. Okay, um, what is the date on the plan you're reviewing, sir? Um, it's a good question. I don't see a date. Um, it was sent to me just before our last hearing. On the 14th? I'm sorry, on the, what was that, 31st? Yeah, 31st. I think I got it uh, several days time, but it's, it doesn't look like it has, let me see if phase one or two have a date on them and that might help. No, it doesn't look like any of them have a date. Mr. Chairman, if I may, Phil Mackey speaking. Yes, Mackey. Uh, good evening. Um, I, I apologize. Uh, as, as Murphy would have it, I can see everybody. Um, I'm on the phone calling in, so I can hear everybody, um, but it's not ideal. Um, unfortunately, I left off uh, right after, Mr. Chairman, uh, you informed the audience, if you will, that you had the comments from Mr. Ryan. Um, I, I can certainly circle back. Uh, there are a few items I would like to say, but that, that's fine. I can do that in a bit. As far as the phasing plan goes, um, with all due respect, it is a living document. Um, we provided that in response to um, town planners uh, request that we actually do 
at phasing plan early on so that we had an idea and could explain graphically to the board what's going on. Um, as far as when Mr. Valenzuela's client is or is not open, that has absolutely nothing to do with this site plan. Um, and considering we're talking about something that's going to stretch out for 18 months, we could be off, phase three could be modified, so on and so forth. You have in front of you our best estimation of how that this is going to work. We all recognize that uh, whether it's snow, tenant issues, or otherwise, things will change. And I'm sure when the planner um, puts together a proposed decision, the condition will say something along the lines that it will be updated and revised with the approval of the town engineer and the town planner, which of course we have no issue with. Um, so with all due respect, the, the discussion of when his client is or is not open um, has really nothing to do with this site plan. If I may respond, um, these phase plans, as all other documents that have been filed with the site plan application, are part of the site plan that you're going to approve. So th these are important documents. I understand these are projected dates. Um, what's important here and what is uh, got to be corrected is that they indicate my client is going to open up as soon as the construction starts on Big Y, on or about. And that's just not conceptually what's supposed to happen here. What's supposed to happen, if you look at the last bullet point on phase three, it says Big Y grand opening, that should also indicate and liquor store reopens. That's a simple revision. Now, if they're telling you they don't know that that's the case, that's a different story. But um, the opening of the liquor store occurs simultaneous, or I think we had put 30 days after they get noticed, but after the big Y opens. And to leave this document in the record indicates that you condone it and somehow it's part of the site plan approval that my client has to open while all this construction is going on with big Y. And we don't even have plans on how that's going to happen. Where's the traffic going to go? Where are people going to park? Where's pedestrian traffic? going to access the premises. And that's just something I can tell you that is not going to be acceptable for my client. And from my, my understanding, my client and the business folks at CETA, I, I think have been in agreement that it's going to, they reopen when Big Y reopens. Um, so I think the plan should be consistent with that. And if you look at the bullet points, it's just simply taking the second bullet point or the third one on phase three plan and changing it to say, uh, or you know, add it to the last bullet point, big Y grand opening and um, liquor store reopens. So there's no confusion what's in your record. Because we all know months down the road, someone comes back and looks at this. I don't remember what I did yesterday. And people are gonna look at it and say, well, there's a phase three plan here in the site plan process that had been circulated a number of times. It's part of the record. And it says, you know, you're gonna reopen when, uh, when big Y uh, construction starts. So we should correct that so the record's accurate. Mr. Mackey, do you have any problem with that? Yes, Mr. Poro, I do. Um, this is a subject of ongoing lease negotiations. There is not an agreement between the parties. Um, okay. And again, that, that's really all I can tell you at this point. Then okay. take it out. Then don't don't put in that it suggests there is an agreement by putting a liquor store build out complete and ready to open, then take that bullet point out and leave it silent. Mr. Valen, I'm going to let you and Mr. Mackey and the other brain trusts here work that out as a tenant and owner situation. And it's really not a planning board situation that needs to mm -hmm. be I agree. I agree with, with all due respect, Mr. Chairman, I agree with you, but they should not put anything in then on the phase three plan. Don't put in we're reopening when big Y construction starts, leave it silent, remove that, because it is subject to the parties negotiating. You're right, the landlord and tenant, but they shouldn't put something in there that later on they're going to tell me, well, it's in the phase three plan, and you sat in on the hearings, Mr. Valenzuela, and it was approved, and it's in the phase three plans, and you didn't appeal the site plan approval, and it says you got to get it open when the uh, construction starts, so just take it out. We'll take out it. We can just duly note that you objected to it as part okay. of this. That's not going to be part of your decision, site plan decision approval. 
Um, I don't understand why it's not removed if we're not trying to put down, if we're not trying to be clear that my client is going to reopen when big Y reopens, then we shouldn't be inaccurate by stating that we reopen <coughs> when big Y starts its construction. Just take all of that reference out. It's unnecessary. It's trying to tie my client's hands on when they're supposed to reopen. You're right. It's between landlord and tenant. Take any reference to that out, please. Very good. Duly noted. Mr. Elkiotis, you have any questions? Good evening. I'd like to just brief the board um, on what took place after the last uh, uh, public hearing. On August 27th, we met with uh, Mark Ryan, town engineer, Phil Mackey, project uh, attorney, uh, project engineer, Nathan Mahone, and we, uh, and Pat Deshaines. We discussed the issue that was raised at the last hearing regarding the ability of large trucks to be able to uh, make deliveries to the Bay State Liquor Store. Um, based on uh, the configuration of the building and the lot configuration, it doesn't appear that there's going to be enough room for a tractor trailer to uh, back down to the, the loading area. However, um, uh, tractor trailers can stop, box trucks can, can make it towards there. And there is, from what I understand, about a, a 60 foot distance where the trucks will need to be unloaded and, and the, the, uh, the liquor is going to need to be hand trucked into the back door. They explained to me that uh, the current uh, delivery situation is very similar and that there is still a distance that um, the liquor needs to be wheeled to get into the back of the building. Um, they did make some adjustments to the uh, location of the dumpster and the dumpster pad um, and, it, and um, did make some minor adjustments to the plan to improve uh, that that negotiating that corner and backing up to uh, um, the corner of the big Y where the deliveries will, will be made. Uh, the project engineer uh, can probably shed a little bit more light on this and, and answer any specific questions uh, from the board. I also wanted to point out that we did receive uh, a letter from one of the abutters, John Cochran, um, indicating that, that he supports the project and his concerns had been addressed. We also did receive um, a letter uh, from Mark Ryan this afternoon, the town engineer, saying that he has no further concerns with the project. Um, and we did get that towards uh, later this afternoon. So the board might not have received that in a timely fashion. Um, we also received a letter dated uh, today's date from attorney Mackey addressed to the board. Um, so the, the applicant did uh, work with us to try to address that delivery concern. I believe the uh, the concern related to the project schedule and what our zoning bylaw requirements for site plan approval require is that the applicant give us a project schedule. We know a schedule is what um, what is hope or intended to be done, but as time goes on, schedules um, can change, and we would not require that uh, we receive any updated schedules if the construction had any kind of delays. Um, so typically we don't really get involved with uh, when one business um, opens and the other opens after that, um, the timing of all that. We just simply require schedules so that the planning board has some understanding of when the project's going to begin uh, and, and end. Uh, those are my, my updates on the status of the review of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Anyone else who would like to have some input here? May I ask, uh, Mr. Chairman, is the, the uh, if this site plan decision you know, application is approved, will there be a notation in there that the liquor store has not conceded or agreed that um, it's going to reopen when the big Y construction starts? I don't believe it would be. Why would it? Why would there be something in the record? Yeah. <laughs> On the yeah, the so so yeah. that because you I know you don't want and you shouldn't get involved between the landlord and tenant. But at some point I've been doing this a long time. At some point, if the landlord and tenant don't come to an agreement, and I think we will, um, you know, the tent, the landlord could very easily pull out this phase three plan and say, 
you participated in the hearings, Valenzuela, and it's in this phase three plan, and you didn't appeal the site plan approval, um, and that's the date you're supposed to reopen when um, Big Y starts its construction. Again, the simple fix here is if you don't want to get involved in this, with all due respect, they should just remove that comment. It's unnecessary. You don't need to know when the liquor store is supposed to reopen. Right? I mean, that, that's a landlord tenant matter. But by putting it in there, it looks, looks like we acquiesce to it. It looks like the board acquiesces to it. So why not just have them remove that comment? Because I've asked them and they don't want to. Okay? So, Ed. Ed so that should tell you something, though, then, right, about what they're, they're trying to. I don't, here. I don't know what it tells me. Other than what you're telling me, it tells me. So it will not. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Any last minute questions? All right. Is anybody, is everybody ready to make a vote this evening regarding the site plan? Anyone that's not ready? Okay. May I get a motion and a second? Mr. Mr. Chairman, just one question before we make a motion. Yes, sir. Uh, I, uh, Paul, oh, he just got up. <laughs> He's back. Question, uh, Paul or uh, Patrick? Yes. Uh, are there any other outstanding um, issues that we haven't covered that we need to cover before we make a vote? Or is, are we? Uh, all the uh, all the other questions have been resolved. Well, except for the engineer looking at the plant, the access, the truck access, and the dumpster. Hey, you, Paul. No, that's Ed Valenzuela. I'm sorry. Oh, he was talking to Paul. Oh. Um, and I, I believe that all of the the issues have been resolved um regarding the site plan um we you know there were some issues that we, that we couldn't solve the uh pedestrian access to the building and i've got a, a commitment from attorney Mackey that uh that they will work with us in the future to try to get that resolved um so i i think that the board is in a position now where um we've had four hearings we've accepted comments from the neighborhood residents um and from the neighboring business owners and their council. Uh, and I don't think we really have any new ground to cover. And so I'd recommend that the board take a vote to close the hearing. And I was just checking on my site plan for the latest revision date and the latest plan revision is dated um, September 8th. So that should be included with the motion. And, and Paul, you said that Mark Ryan has, has looked at that. He has, and he submitted a, a memo today stating that uh, he has no further issues with the site plan. Patrick, I want to add something else. Here. I was just going to echo uh, uh, Paul's point. We had we received a letter today from Mark Ryan um, um, approving the plan and seeing no outstanding issues. Thank you. Okay. Have I got Mr. Hatchy? Did you have a your hand up there? Okay. I do. Yes, sir. Mr. Sheehan. Yes. I just, uh, I, I'm ready to vote tonight. I just uh, wanted to ask any board members or, or Patrick or Paul, if there are any conditions we may want to put in before we put together the, the motion. So I'm, I know that there are several issues we talked about, and I'm just wondering if uh, they have any ideas of any conditions that we may be necessary so we can include that in the motion. Thank you, Mr. Sheehan. Um, I do have a, have a short list of uh, special conditions that I'd recommend that the board include with the decision. Those will be accompanied by uh, our standard conditions of approval. The first one is that uh, we would require that they submit a uh, uh, construction traffic route plan and that uh, that construction traffic route plan would need to be approved by the DPW director and the police safety officer. The second condition would um, 
be that they send a copy of the letter that they provided to the board listing the appropriate people to contact in the event of any noise or, or other types of complaints about the shopping center, that they send a copy of that letter um, to each resident on Davis Ave so that they will know who to contact in the event of some kind of a concern or a complaint. Uh, third condition would be that uh, any snow that's plowed be stored um, on the opposite side of the parking lot away from the river so that that runoff doesn't enter the river. Uh, we will include uh, delivery hours. I'm not proposing anything to change from what had been in the past, but I think that it would be helpful to memorialize that as a condition of approval. Um, there was discussion about uh, posting a sign on Davis Ave for an area um, as no parking. And if there's no parking allowed in that area, it will help the vehicles, um, the, the large tractor trailer trucks to be able to negotiate the turn better. Um, and so that's gonna involve uh, petitioning the Board of Selectmen to approve a, uh, a little no parking zone. So we think that's a good idea to help um, improve the traffic, truck traffic flow. And we'll ask them to do that as well. And, um, to continue to work with us to provide pedestrian access to the shopping center. I'm, I'm open, open to suggestions for any other con conditions of approval the board might have. Thank you. Uh, just, a, just a question on the, on the uh, no parking area, and we know that has to go to the uh, selectmen. Uh, would that be that we would just part of the condition would just be that we would write a letter in, uh, letting them know the situation? Um, requesting their approval. Yes. Yes. Yep. So the responsibility will be the applicants to pursue that approval, but I would be glad to provide a, um, a memo to the board of selectmen explaining um, that this was discussed during site plan approval and that um, it was based on the recommendation from the project engineer to provide better um, truck traffic uh, flow in and out of the site. Sorry. I think that would be great. That'd be helpful. Okay. Thank you, Paul. So whoever is going to make the motion to close the hearing, do that first, and then we'll take a vote on that, and then we'll get into the actual site plan with the list of conditions that we just All right. Mr. Sheehan. A motion to close the public hearing. I have a second. Second. We have a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Unanimous. 5 0. Roll call vote. Mr. Hatchie. Aye. Mr. Pachakowski. Aye. Mr. Sheehan. Aye. Mr. Bamberg. Aye. And the chairman votes aye. 5 0 to close the public hearing. Second part, I need a motion to approve with the condition so stated on these. Mr. Sheehan. Motion to approve with the, uh, the condition so stated. And a second. Aye. I have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Sheehan. Yeah. On, a, on the roll call. Aye. Okay. Mr. Hatchie. Aye. Mr. Pachikowski. Aye. Mr. Bamber. Aye. The chairman votes aye. Five nothing on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. The hour of seven oh five seven forty five. It's almost here, but it's not a public hearing, so we can move right into it. Informal discussion on the stormwater management.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This evening, we've invited Terry Snyder from the Neponset River Watershed Association to join us to um, explain what um, she's recommending we do in order to um, change our zoning bylaw to be in compliance with new federal EPA MS4 stormwater management standards. Um, and so I'd like to, uh, I, I did provide a memo to the board with some background on this and I'd like to invite Kerry to uh, discuss this with the board. We also have Mark Ryan joining us for this discussion and Holly Jones, our new environmental planner. Thank you all for coming to our planning board meeting this evening. We look forward to your information and updates. Thank you. Thank Kerry. you very much for having me. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. yes. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm the advocacy director for the Neponset River Watershed Association. And um, I thought I'd start the discussion with just a brief overview of what the MS4 program is for those who might not be that familiar with it. Um, the MS4 permit, it's uh, jointly administered by both the EPA and MassDEP, and it's authorized under the Federal Clean Water Act regulations. Um, and it's designed to reduce stormwater pollution. Uh, this includes local regulation of unauthorized connections with or accidental leakage of pollutants into the stormwater system. Um, it also includes regulation of construction and post-construction activities to ensure runoff is minimized and clean. And it requires um, MS4 permittees um, like Norwood to engage the public through education and outreach activities. Um, through NEPRA, we, uh, we jointly administer the Neponset Stormwater Partnership. Um, with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. And the NSP is a collaboration um, of all of the watershed towns. So currently we're actively working with 11 communities, including Norwood, um, and they, every the staff come together and they share success stories, they learn from their peers, um, and they impl we implement regional education and outreach activities to make sure we've got consistent messaging um, and hopefully alleviate some of the burden on municipal staff to comply with some of the MS4 requirements. Um, we've also developed a model stormwater bylaw and model stormwater regulations. Um, the models are largely based on a bylaw and regulations that were um, adopted in 2016 by Westwood based on uh, the draft MS4 permit um, at the time. And we've updated them and annotated them um, with, uh, with recommendations and um, sort of highlights where, um, where the permit requires certain actions. Um, because we, we want municipalities to sort of take a look at, uh, at all of these, see what they have to do, and see what might be in their best interest to do for the long term. Um, we do expect every permit, um, which is a five-year permit, every permit is going to require more and more action on the part of permittees. So they're just going to become more st restrictive um, on construction and post-construction um, activities. So uh, we, we want the model to be forward-looking. Um, so we look at the MS4 permit as sort of requiring the bare minimum, um, and we're encouraging all communities to go uh, beyond those for, um, for economic reasons, to cut down on some of the things that a town might be responsible for if they don't regulate a, a construction project, for example. Um, you want to make sure that anything that's going on in town is not adding to um, your stormwater, your polluted stormwater runoff. Um, so, for example, Norwood is responsible for pollution it allows to enter the streams within its borders, and if there's a sewer leak, Norwood has to clean it up and fix it. Um, if development goes in and it increases polluted runoff, the town would also be responsible for eliminating that pollution um, if it's affecting water quality. Um, so that's that's sort of where where we're coming from, um, and we want we want to make sure that the town can share some of that economic burden with those who are um, taking advantage of. of um, land use in town. So the updated MS4 regulations were originally due to be implemented by June 30th of 2020. Um, however, uh, the EPA is likely to extend that deadline to June 30th of 2021. Um, so that's why I'm here before you today um, to sort of line this up, um, uh, answer any questions that you might have, um, and talk about how to uh, get this to, to town meeting. Um, so ideally, towns will adopt a bylaw that addresses stormwater for all land disturbing activities, both wetland and upland. Um, 
But since Norwood doesn't have a standalone stormwater management bylaw, um, I went ahead and, and looked at the zoning bylaw because it does um, address stormwater. And I, I simply redlined it with, um, with some recommendations. Um, so while I, I'd love to, to see a stormwater bylaw uh, be implemented eventually, my goal here is to recommend some changes that um, make sure that Norwood is capturing all of the activities the permit requires it to capture. Um, but also to make sure that Norwood uh, is giving itself the authority to uh, effectively enforce these regulations so that they can be in compliance with, um, with the permit. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Um, let me see. Do you want to go through the actual red lines in, in the draft? I could share my screen and we could go through it. Paul, would it's, you? I'm sorry, what was that? I said, Paul, would you like to do it that way? It It's up to the board. There are, there are 17 different places in the bylaw that, where um, changes occur. Some are minor, others a little bit more involved. Can we, can we get, kind of pick and choose? Absolutely. I see it's section 2.0, the districts. It's an area that's targeted. Yeah. How do we, how do we introduce the, the districts, if you will, to, to be addressed? So I started to redline in what I thought was the more general, um, this isn't something you want to do by district. It needs to apply to uh, land disturbance activities as it's defined in the permit of um, one acre or more. Okay. Um, so regardless of what district it's in. Okay. That's the first question. Anyone else have a question that like to at this time. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, instead of going through through all 17, um, I got a, I have a, a, a question for uh, Mr. Ryan um, and uh, Paul, if you want to jump in and uh, Holly, welcome to Norwood. Uh, good luck. Uh, you'll be um, you three are the experts on this. I, I uh, first question, Mr. Ryan. On our stormwater now, I, I think, is our stormwater filtered before it ends up in the creeks and the rivers? There is a filtering system, isn't there, for storm runoff, or is it just a straight pipe? Uh, thank you, Mr. Patrick Halsey. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, our stormwater is not filtered. Not filtered, okay. Yeah, but for many years, uh, Mr. Patrick Halsey, uh, the town since I've been here, and, and that's not because of me, but the planning board has been very proactive in ensuring any development that comes under their purview is uh, is filtered in some way. Right. So, I mean, I've been here since 1999, and, and planning board has, uh, I think, been ahead of the curve on this, uh, you know, uh, dealing with development, uh, making sure certain mitigation efforts are put in place so uh so the answer the, the, the answer to your question a lot of the town is not but uh, since 1999 through the planning board conservation commission and zoning board and always been pretty good at, at addressing this uh in that regard this these changes go a long way to just cementing everything so everyone's on the same page and um we're going to be uh doing what we've done in the past and maybe a little bit more going in the future and i guess my next question is obviously you can't be ready for this town meeting but do you think mark at some point we should have a separate bylaw for this uh as kerry suggested uh you know cut this out of the out of the regulations and make a separate bylaw for it is that something that maybe we should work at down the road I mean, I would leave that up to Paul, uh, being the uh, you know 
the expert on planning and zoning, but this this is a this really strengthens our law, and uh, I think eventually you'll add that to the planning board rules and regulations. So I don't know if a, a separate bylaw is necessary, but I I would leave that to Paul to make that. He's he's good at uh, recognizing when it's important and when it's not. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I can respond to that or add to, to Mark's comments. Um, we, we may need to change the subdivision rules and regulations um, to, to mirror these particular changes that we're making now. Since we don't get a lot of subdivisions, it's not quite as urgent, but um, it's also easier to change the subdivision rules and regulations. We just need to hold a public hearing. Um, changing the zoning bylaw, as you know, is a town meeting, two thirds vote. Um, I, I want to add to Mark's comment uh, or answer to your question about um, whether or not our stormwater enters the town streams treated or untreated. The, the big why case that we just closed the hearing on this evening was a perfect example of a site that was built in 1963. The stormwater since 1963 has sheet flowed off of that big parking lot and directly into Haas Brook with no pretreatment at all. The plans that, that the board is going to approve include um, pretreatment of the stormwater, deep sump, sump catch basins, um, oil grease separators. Uh, and, and what we've been able to do through, through the efforts of uh, Al Getz and Mark, when we get a plan for a redevelopment, which is mostly what we get because most of the town is already developed, that's our opportunity to try to bring them into compliance with with the current regulations for handling stormwater and that's exactly what we did with the big y site um former um uh, conservation al gets and i've had many conversations about this and and we agreed that while what's out there is is built and in in effect grandfathered until they want to make some kind of change and need to come back to one of our boards. And that's our best opportunity to try to, try to talk them into complying with zoning. Um, redevelopments don't have to uh, follow as strict stormwater management regulations as new development. Um, but Al often uh, twisted their arm and told them this was the right thing to do. And, and um, he was able to get more out of them. We did, the, we did something similar over at the, at the Shaw's Plaza um, working with, with Mark Ryan and Al, we got um, um, stormwater uh, improved. I think we improved the capacity to reduce some, some flooding. And so this is when we, we get our opportunity to bring things up to date. And, and we all recognize it and we take advantage of that whenever we can. So what's out there you know, stays out there, but when anything new is built, it has to comply with um, current DEP standards. And whenever any redevelopment comes across the planning board or the conservation commission, we try to um, uh, do our best to get them to uh, step up and improve the water quality of the discharge into our streams. Thank you, Paul. Randy, does that answer your questions? Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have a question right now they'd like to move along with to Kerry? Kerry, it looks like you're all set. No, I'm okay. All right. <laughs> Um, I, I would like to just point out, so the, the bylaw changes, um, again, are just to make sure that, that the town has the authority to do, um, to do what they need to do. And then I anticipate that the zoning regs and the subdivision regs are also going to have to be amended, but those can much more easily um, uh, change as uh, the regulation, the uh, permit changes. Um, so there is more detail in the permit that you'll have to implement, but um, that's, that's a much easier lift. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, I want to thank Kerry for taking the time to, to do this for us. It, it, it was something that I wasn't really capable of because I don't know the regulations that well. Um, <clears throat> we will need to hold a public hearing in October prior to the special town meeting, which it's looking more like it's going to be the beginning of November. And I'd like to ask Kerry if she'd be able to join us for that public hearing and be able to do a short presentation um, as she did tonight and be able to field any questions that we might get from anyone at the hearing. Please do. Yes, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. And um, I'm also happy to join in at the town meeting. I did that with Milton when they were updating their bylaws too, just to sort of be there to answer questions for those who didn't ask the questions at the public hearing. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Any, Mr. Ryan, you have anything else you'd like to insert this evening regarding planning board's uh, work here? No, I think uh, pretty much what, what's in front of you is, is solid. And to echo Paul, that uh, thank you to Kerry and the Ponce of River Watershed. It's, uh, it's a very good partnership and uh, it's, it's, it's needed. It's absolutely needed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Anyone else? Okay. Kerry, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for having me and thank you uh, to, to all of you for being such a great partner with um, with the Neponset. We Norwood is, is definitely um, one of the towns we've worked very closely with and appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, have a great night. Thank you very much. Holly, very nice to meet you as well. Mr. Bamber? You have a question? Nope, just waving hi and bye. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Okay, we have a few more items on this evening's agenda. Uh, Paul, you want to give us an update on the department updates and other business, please? Yes, sir. Um, I, thanks, Mark. Thank you. I would like like to let the board um, know and invite you to the Board of Selectmen meeting on September 22nd. We'll be meeting with the Selectmen along with Ted Brovitz to um, discuss the Route 1 rezoning project. And I think it's time for us to uh, um, begin that process of communicating to the Board of Selectmen what this zoning change is going to um, involve and how it will affect the Route 1 corridor. Um, and so I'd like to have you put that on your calendars. I don't have a time yet, but it'll be sometime after seven o'clock. Ted's um, gonna do a, a presentation similar to what um, we've seen so far. Um, I've been focusing on the bylaw amendments um, and, and reviewing them and providing some feedback to Ted. Um, our subcommittee of Ernie and Brian have met uh, with Pat and Ted and I, and we've gone over um, um, comments on what he's prepared so far. Um, at our next planning board meeting, we are going to um, talk about all the proposed zoning bylaw amendments for uh, the November special town meeting. And so we will um, have uh, draft bylaw amendments for you prior to that meeting. Um, and I mentioned that, uh, that Holly has started and, and I've spent some time over the last couple of weeks um, showing Holly around town and where there are active um, projects going on in front of the Conservation Commission. She's um, uh, reviewing files and, and meeting people in town and starting to get acclimated. Um, she's got some big shoes to fill, but we're confident that um, she's going to do a good job. Um, I don't know, Holly, do you have anything you want to say to the board? No, I'm excited about stormwater, so... Yay, <laughs> but it's nice to see you all. Thank you. There's not many people out there get excited about stormwater. Only uh, when it's in my basement. On the matter of stormwater, um, uh, at the end of last week, uh, I became aware of uh, um, a situation on the gravel pit on University Ave operated by UAVE. Um, we were actually notified by um, one of our contacts at the Deposit River Watershed Association, um, and, and he was pleased to, to let us know that there's going to be $50,000 available to spend towards um, uh, remediation in Purgatory Brook, um, towards a project that will improve the water quality in Purgatory Brook. Um, but how that all came about was something that I was not aware of until about the middle of last week. The zoning board was scheduled to have a public hearing, uh, I think tomorrow night, on uh, the phase two for the gravel removal operation. And, and what we uh, found out right uh, back in March when the pandemic was starting to shut things down, um, we had received a call from uh, uh, the facilities manager at MS Walker, the neighboring property owner to the gravel pit. And uh, we were informed that uh, 
uh, along the property line between the two properties that they were concerned that trees had been cleared and that some of the, the earth of their property had actually been removed. We notified uh, Mark, uh, Matt Walsh, the building commissioner, and he investigated and he ended up issuing a stop work order. What Matt found, and, and some of this is, is a little bit embarrassing for, for me, is that, um, that the planning board site plan approval was for two years and that was issued in 2013. And so that had actually expired um, back in, in, you know, like 16. The zoning board special permit had also expired years ago as well. But the more troubling thing that, that we discovered related back to the $50,000 is that that was a fine levied by the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office against Mr. Federico and UAVE for um, just letting all of the stormwater from the gravel pit wash directly into um, the town's catch basins, which are located at the, uh, at the driveway for the facility. And uh, those went into the catch basins under the road and dumped directly into Purgatory Brook. This is a site that had no pretreatment and it had um, what they described as industrial waste water um, entering the town stored storm drains and directly flowing into Purgatory Brook. Because of uh, these violations, they, they had not um, uh, received a stormwater protection plan approval from um, the EPA. Um, they had not constructed a detention basin, which was supposed to cause some pretreatment and distillation of sediment so that only cleaner water would be released. Um, they didn't do any of those things, and, and the Attorney General's Office Environmental Unit caught them. They fined them $50,000, and they also told them that they had to pay $25,000 in attorney fees related to the investigation and the development of a consent decree that was um, entered into by Mr. Federico with the State Attorney General's Office. Um, I, I put together a memo and I communicated this to the zoning board. As a result, they've requested a second continuance of their public hearing. Attorney Hilliard is representing Mr. Federico um, and they're gonna try to uh, resolve, I think, work on a resolution of some of these issues before they go back to the, the zoning board. Um, after the zoning board acts on this, um, they will need site plan approval from the planning board. Um, I believe I, I copied the planning board on the memo. You might not have seen it because I did it late Friday afternoon, but at the end of the memo um, explains that I'm, I'm, I'm concerned and troubled by the turn of events that took place here. Not only did the owner um, of the facility operate it for years after their special permit had expired and after their site plan approval had expired, in that same time frame. They applied for um, construction of an asphalt plant. They were denied that building permit by the building commissioner. He appealed that permit uh, denial by the building commissioner to the zoning board. The zoning board um, upheld the building commissioner's decision to deny it. And this guy appealed that to land court. He lost the case in land court. And a year later, he reapplied for the same thing. Um, and so, this is this is somebody that operates a business in Norwood that apparently has little regard for zoning regulations, little regard for conditions of approval on planning board or zoning board permits, um, doesn't follow the approved plan from the Conservation Commission, and has violated federal law, uh, federal environmental laws. And so I was trying to get the zoning board's attention um, so that they consider all these factors when they do have a public hearing to consider allowing this man to uh, continue to operate his facility in Norwood. Thank you, Paul. I want to move on to just a few more items. Um, I'd like to ask Pat to um, talk a little bit about his project to um, develop some parklets in town. Pat? Yep. So. Uh I'm not sure if I brought this up at our last meeting, um, but MassDOT launched a grant about um, mid-July or so. Uh, I could be could be off of the date, but basically this is the Shared Street and Spaces grant. 
Um, the goal of the grant is to basically find ways to utilize um, sidewalks, closing of roads, anything that you can do to try to um, both get separation uh, uh, for people that you know want to be outside and want to um, you know want to recreate, want to be social, but also be safe. Um, you know, due to due to the ongoing pandemic. So that's the underlying theme of the grant itself. Um, what we ended up going with um, was a what they're called parklets, and basically what it based is 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 more or less a sidewalk extension. Um, it can be permanent. It could be temporary it could be something you know you could you could use um you know something that you know that 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 is you know high end or it could be something that's kind of um pretty utilitarian in, in its design but we um we applied for part uh, the idea of doing a parklet project in the downtown um as well as possibly south norwood in the washington street commercial district in general um or the uh, washington street corridor i should say and so we uh we were awarded funds. I think we were one of the first, uh, I think we were, we were one of the first five or so towns that actually got the grant out there and were able to um, have it awarded to us. So uh, it was about $120,000 to look into implementing uh, both a temporary as well as permanent parklets um, throughout the town. And so where we're at right now is we've um, we've talked to vendors, we've talked to um, uh, a consultants just uh you know one of the one of the consultants we got was through uh through dot just to kind of gauge on you know where's the best location for these things um you know what are the best materials what are kind of best practices and so right now where we're at we have a, i would say you know about at you know a little over a handful uh in terms of locations kind of chosen for where we want to implement these parklets um it having a mix of both a temporary structure and a permanent structure um the permanent um I wish mark ryan was still on he could probably probably a little more information that was something that um that then mark and um and annie murphy over in engineering kind of came up in terms of its design um its exact location of where it will be implemented as well as the exact location for all these um it's kind of all pending selectman approval um for our for the temporary parklet design we ended up um going out to bed and awarding it the contract to archer track which is a company out of minnesota uh, and i believe they have a branch in maryland as well and their design it's it's, it's um i think it's fairly priced for its um for its purpose it's it's it's, it's of a high quality design and materials it's something you see in um i think all these parklets are kind of things you see in more larger cities where they try to uh reuse um street parking and try to create um outdoor spaces in areas that are more kind of um uh urbanized and so this isn't something you'd see in like a, in a town but it's a new approach that and we're not you know we're not alone in, in a couple of the applicants i think uh i want to say lexington and beverly a few other towns that also apply for the same yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, uh, oh, looks like i'm echoing uh are doing a similar thing so it's uh you know we're excited to see what we can uh what we can do with it and obviously you know like i said everything with our locations will be vetted by the selectmen and um the goal is to have it implemented by early october uh that goal is you know very ambitious from mass dot which i find ironic but that's um it, it's just you know it, it is what it is it, it, it's uh we'll so hopefully see if we can get it done by the deadline uh i think right now we're we're probably in a position where with the weather if we can get stuff implemented by sometime in october we're more likely gonna have to take it down for the colder months so you know optimistic we can get it done in time and be able to utilize it during the fall um and maybe early winter but it is likely that these are something that be, might be more prevalent when we get into the uh into the spring but so it, it's a moving project and um we're hopefully hopefully get done with it soon can you, can you let us know one of the areas that you're talking about for one of these projects yeah so i mean yeah, so uh i don't know well yeah so i, I, I we've looked into um a few locations in South Norwood. Um, 
just to kind of I know that if you see our downtown, we've done a great job for outdoor dining. Um, and one of the reasons I want to kind of focus on South Norwood was just it, it, it was the you know if you're looking at the Washington Street corridor, it's just they haven't had the same outdoor dining um, uh, a success or um, or use that we see in the downtown area. So kind of focusing there is kind of was something that I wanted to do. I just thought it would be it would help to um, um, break up. The, you know the monotonous corridor and kind of offer a different seating element and a different um, use for some of the uh, restaurants and businesses down there. That's just again one location that we're thinking about, but a few locations that we, we want to make sure we have approval by the um, you know by the selectmen and kind of have everything vetted um, through our internal working group before um, bringing it uh, to them for final approval. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. <clears throat> Just a couple more things, Mr. Chairman. Um, we reported previously that we have, um, the town has applied for and received a micro enterprise grant program. The town's received um, a little over $140,000 that can be awarded to businesses, small businesses of five employees or fewer. And um, if they are income qualified, they can receive uh, grants of up to $10,000. Uh, this grant program um, is being administered by the Mass Growth Capital Corporation, and um, it took them a little while to get the, uh, the grant application and everything ready to go. Last week, we received word that um, the grants are now available, and we wanted to uh, make sure that we mentioned that at tonight's meeting. If there are any businesses in town that um, would like to apply, um, they can go to our website and, and link on to information. Um, we are not handling it directly. That Mass, Mass Growth Capital Corporation is going to be handling the application process. Uh, along the same, uh, in the deadline for um, applying for the grant is uh, September 26th, Pat? September 25th. September 25th. So unfortunately, um, there's not a long uh, window of, of opportunity. And so if anybody's interested, they need to jump on that and, and apply right away. The other grant um, program also related to the Federal uh, CARES Act is uh, housing money that's available for folks that are struggling paying their rent or mortgages. Um, those individuals that are also income qualified can apply it's not through our department or the Times, but it's through um, an organization called SMOC. And again, on the town's website, there's information um, related to uh, COVID that they can um, click on a link and, and get access to uh, information about that grant program and can apply for funds if they're struggling with making their housing costs. The last item, Mr. Chairman, that I have is we have tentatively scheduled a stakeholder meeting for the Route 1 rezoning for uh, September 24th. And so uh, we've got two big meetings coming up on the 22nd with the Board of Selectmen. Um, that'll be a virtual meeting like this and the stakeholder meeting will be virtual as well. And that's gonna be on um, September 24th, a couple of days later. I'd like to see if we can get all the boards to, uh, board members to attend that if you're available. Paul, do you, will you have an agenda for that meeting? Yeah, we're gonna, we, we will um, do an agenda. Um, we've got to do a presentation. We've got to do a meeting announcement. So yes, we will. And we don't have that yet. But once we have that stuff, we will send it out to the board. Thank you. Mr. Pachikowski. Quick question, Paul. On the selectmen's meeting with Ted uh, next on the 22nd, uh, this is just a, a preliminary discussion. I mean, we haven't finalized the bylaw or the vote, or this is not what the, this is not the final product. Like you said, we haven't had stakeholder meetings, public input yet. So th this is just kind of an update uh, to get I mean, that. Is that the purpose of this? Yeah, it's it's to brief them on on what we've been working on and what Ted's been working on. Um, we don't have final versions of the bylaw yet. It's still being reviewed. So yeah. Um, but, but um, you know, time is getting short with uh, town meeting in, in the beginning of November. We'll have to do our public hearing sometime in October. 
and we really wanted the press to start doing our work to get the word out about what we're working on, um, get people talking about it in an effort to try to answer questions now and vet it with, with the stakeholders and town meeting members. Okay, anyone else? Any questions on Paul's update? Anything to add? Okay. Well, number oh three. Okay. Paul, any updates on the um, the legal issue with the town of Westwood? Yes. Um, so because this is a matter of litigation, advice of counsel, we are not supposed to uh, discuss details, but I will tell the board that it seems as though there's progress being made between national development and the Westwood Planning Board. Um, and we're hopeful that they're going to um, be able to resolve, uh, complete their negotiations and, and resolve this fairly soon. We received some indications at the end of last week that um, um, the issues could be resolved as soon as this week. So I understand that there is progress being made. Thank you. Anyone else? If there's nothing else to insert for this evening's meeting, I'll entertain a motion to uh, close the meeting. Mr. So, moved. so moved. And a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 On the roll call, Mr. Hatchie. Mr. Fachikowski. I vote aye. I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> aye. Mr. Sheehan. Aye. Mr. Bamber. Aye. The chairman votes aye. Unanimous, folks. Five nothing.